it's the old classic, the classic chestnut, isn't it? The index is not being used. And here's the question that came in. We have an incredibly simple SQL statement that does a unique key lookup against a massive table. Like it's the obvious standout candidate for using an index. Yet the damn database is not using an index. And then they, they offer this extra information. We are on Exadata. Is it possible that SmartScan is blocking it? And not that I want a tangent too far off onto what Exadata is, but if you don't, if you're not an Exadata customer, one of the big benefits of Exadata is we have a lot of smarts inside the storage layer. And most of those smarts are very much focused toward improving the performance, and we're talking dramatically here, of scanning large volumes of data. Exadata's history originally started off as more of a warehouse appliance, and then as the technology evolved, it evolved into a general purpose awesome singing, dancing database appliance. But the groundwork behind Exadata was all about making large scans incredibly efficient. And as a result, you'll often hear the cliche, you yeah, know, with Exadata, you don't need indexes at all, which is patently false, but it is a good demonstration of the fact that so much tech improves the performance of full scans. That's why this person has offered this suggestion that maybe all the smarts about making full table scans so incredibly quick on Exadata is what's defeating what seems to be an obvious candidate for an index. I want to just take a break here and just a slight digression and say, I want to talk about an important lesson, which I normally pontificate about, but I fell into, I fell into the same trap myself. So this is more of a, a lesson and just a personal embarrassment that I thought it's important to share because I don't want you to get trapped as well. The question didn't originally come in phrased like that. The first contact that was made to me was, we're having some dramas with stored outlines. And now that you know the context of the question, what had happened was they thought this thing should be using an index. It wasn't, so they thought they would create a stored outline. They created the stored outline, which should force the index, and it still wasn't using it. So by the time they reached out to me, they're saying, look, we think there's a problem with stored outlines. What did I do? Well, I was a doofus. This is what I did. We then spent, myself and this customer, spent the next probably two or three hours looking through stored outlines, trying to work out why it wasn't working. Then we switched over to SQL plan management to see, well, maybe there's a bug in stored outlines, maybe SPM's gonna fix this. Then we started looking in at the lower parameters. Maybe some of the parameters were tilting things so far in favor of full table scans that that's why the index wasn't being used. Then we looked at system stats because they're specially designed for Exadata. We looked at the storage stand costing. We looked at underscore parameters. There was even talk about turning off various Exadata features, all these things. And of course, as you'd imagine, because this was a customer in crisis mode, the number of people on the Zoom calls and the email list gets growing and growing and growing. It even got to the stage where some people, perhaps not so technically minded on the call, were saying, maybe we should just bounce everything and see what happens. It's the classic as people get more and more angst and more and more panicky. The important lesson here was, you know, it was none of these things. If you have a performance problem, just because someone approaches you in the middle of their crisis, in this case, they said stored outlines. I have a problem with stored outlines. It's important to take a step back and realize that they may have headed down a path that you shouldn't be heading down. Step back, look at the problem, take a closer look and do it from first principles. And that's finally after three hours of me being an idiot and looking you know, at all these things that weren't actually the cause. Uh, we discovered the cause and really it's just a, a new version of what I call an old classic. So let's have a look at this old classic. Here's my table called T slow. As the name suggests, this is going to be the table that's going to have its problems on it. And you can see it's pretty much a very, very simple table. It's got a primary key, just numeric one through 10. In fact, there's actually a lot of rows here. I've just picked the first 10 and an object name. Very, very simple. You can probably guess it's taken as a source from a copy of DBA objects. If I count up the number of rows in T slow, there's about 80,000. That's a copy of DBA objects, but only those two columns, the primary key, one through 80,000, and the object name. If I go look at all the bits and pieces that I would expect to have on a table, I've got a primary key constraint. Constraint type P is a primary key constraint. It is on the PK column, hence the name PK for primary keys. Primary key constraint on the primary key column. We have an index as well for that primary key constraint and that index is valid, there's nothing wrong. And just to prove to the fact that it's not got some mystery set of columns concatenated, it literally is just that primary key column. It is exactly what you would expect on a table that has a primary key that is backed up by an index. Let's do an explain plan for 
selecting from this query where the primary key equals a single value. It's the most rudimentary query we could run and we get table access full. Let's force an index now. So we saw table access full. Let's force an index where primary key equals 12. It will use the index, but it's doing an index full scan. It's going to visit every single row in the table, which is still not a unique key lookup. Something very odd going on here. If I describe the table, the answer becomes evident. Notice here that the primary key, even though it looked like numerics, is actually a varchar 240. Savvy readers may have guessed this, or savvy listeners may have guessed this. You would have seen when we listed the primary key, it was left justified, which means it's a string, not a number. So if I do an explain plan now and ask explain plan to give me all the conventional output you get with an explain plan, you can see the key thing. This is the classic problem. We've done two number around a string column. Everyone I'm sure on the call that's ever encountered this is well familiar with it. That thing where Oracle will implicitly try to get the data types in alignment. And so it'll put a two number around the string column, varchar2 column, and therefore we defeat the use of an index. So this isn't the problem the customer is having, but this is that the classic take that we've all used to. So let's remove the ambiguity. The reason that we fall into that previous trap so easily is because a column looks like a number, but it's not. It's stored as a string. This one, much, much more direct in our face. I'm creating the table called tslow now, but you can see I'm actually using a string for the primary key. If we look at the data, there's no mystery here. It's not, it, we couldn't you know, fool anyone that it's a numeric. It actually is a string, str1, str, etc., etc. There's no ambiguity here. Now I'll do an explain plan on str123 in quotes. So it's a string column, string literal, and it uses an index unique scan. That's just stock standard unique access. We're very happy with that. So for a literal, works fine. Let's now do it for a bind variable. So I exec my, I got some input here coming from the user, str123, the same value. I run an explain plan. Explain plan says, yep, not going to be a drama. You've given me a string, it's a string column, I'll use a unique scan. So far, you're probably thinking, thanks, Connor, you've shown me absolutely nothing I don't already know. Let's actually run it, though. So rather than explain plan, I've actually run the query this time. And then I asked for the database as to what did it actually plan that it use. And here's where the customer problem had become apparent. Table access full. Explain plan said it will be using an index lookup. But when I actually came to run it, at runtime, the database couldn't do it. Even though it's a string variable for a string primary key, there's no mystery here about thinking like a number. What's gone on? This is the very, very subtle difference. When I define this bind variable, I defined it as an n varchar 210, not a varchar 210. And even just that slight difference is enough to fall back into that classic issue of having to convert a column to make sure the data type matches. When I run this query and split out, print out the entire explain plan, here's the new variation on a theme. You can see that rather than being a two number, we have an internal function called sysop c2c, character to character, effectively a conversion to character kind of function. We need to convert a varchar2 column to match the bind variable which was an n varchar2 and that's why we had to that conversion and this is the function that does the conversion you might be thinking well how many people use n varchar2 like over and these people weren't they hadn't you know written explicit code in sql plus obviously this was coming from their application it turns out that some third party applications that connect through especially older versions of Oracle drivers, uh, some of the older versions of Python, some of the older versions of what was the other one it might have been C sharp, some of the older versions of these tools were built before the Unicode databases became the norm, we used to all do our databases in US seven ASCII and W E eight ISO 15 etc. Nowadays we all do our stuff in UTF eight because we know it's the right way to go. But some of these tools to handle UTF-8, if you typed in a string on these tools, it would say, oh, to map that to the database, which is running UTF-8, which most modern databases are, I'll convert the string to nvarchar2, 
because the language itself couldn't natively handle UTF-8. So they were innocently thinking they were passing strings to the database. The driver was going, whoa, it's UTF-8. I'll make that an NVAR char too. And hence they had this problem. Well, you can't just roll up to an application and say, yeah, that's right. That old version of Python and the old drivers, we just need to rip that out and replace it. That's a relatively significant project you have to undertake. And so this is the way that we worked around it. We simply created a function-based index on sysop c2c, the primary key. Now when we run our input, you can see we actually are using that index and you can see that conventional function-based index style of virtual column that's being created. So that's effectively what I call a new take on an old problem. Most of us are familiar with the, the invisible two number conversion. Uh, this is one I'd never seen before. And um, if you, you know, float around, you can actually see various examples on the net that people have encountered this over time. But in particular, I would warn you that nowadays that now we have so many different tools talking to the database. Um, no longer people just write things in Oracle Forms, PL SQL, et cetera. We have you know, a whole team. Uh, Chris Jones holds up you know, the driver team where we've got Node and Python, all these kind of things talking to the database. You might you know, enter, hit these kind of niche issues. So just be aware of it. And as always, go back to the root cause. Don't go down some twisted rabbit hole like I did and waste hours of your time and your customer's time.